lawyers and listeners, today we are talking with Lisa Wotaninsu about aftershocks and opportunities for the post-pandemic future. Lisa Wotaninsu is a managing partner of the innovation and futurist company Future Navigator. Prior to that, uh, she was a director uh, at the Fahrenheit 212, an ideas company uh, owned by Saatchi. For eight years, uh, she worked as a director of uh, research at the uh, Copenhagen Institute for Future Studies. Since 2002, uh, she has been a member of the Foresight uh, Editorial uh, Board in the EU. Uh, Lisa Wotter and her colleagues uh, predicted uh, Brexit in 1996. Also, uh, she is a founding member of the Global Future Forum. Furthermore, she is a board member at the uh, Specialisterne Live Board uh, Foundation and the 2020 NMC Technology Outlook. Lisa Wotter is a co-author of uh, Aftershocks and Opportunities, Scenarios for the Post-Pandemic Future that was published in August 1st, 2020. Lisa Wotter works extensively with scenarios for the future, innovations, technologies and megatrends that have consequences uh, for the way we think, work, invest, feel and consume. Lisa Wotter is in a great demand as a keynote speaker, futurist coach, uh, as well as a consulting for the global companies like uh, OSM, uh, IKEA, HP, SIS, Travelpool Europe, Ramble and uh, Novo Nordisk. Uh, the link on uh, her website and her contacts will be below the video. And now my conversation with Lisa Wotter. Uh, hello, hello, Lisa Lotta. Uh, my great pleasure to have you on my channel. Thank you for inviting. Uh, Lisa Lotta, please uh, tell us, give us the answer on the first question, please. Uh, uh, now scientists are talking about info epidemic and uh, uh, last July, uh, World Health Organization held a conference about info hysteria. Uh, tell us, please, uh, how can laymen uh, understand information, flow of information about uh, COVID-19 and distinguish uh, true information from untruth information? I think as a futurist, that's a quite fantastic, a very good uh, question because uh, what it means is that we have gone from a period of time where there was a lot of fake news to the real old-fashioned scientist is going back into fashion because you know they might not be so interesting to listen at, at the media but uh, they actually know what they're talking about. So uh, for once we actually started not looking so much at influences but more at proper CVs and people who stick to their guns in order to talk in statistical terms and who are uh, having some some proven competence in the field. So you could say uh, COVID-19 in some ways has been a way to get scientists back on track and uh, to get them famous again. I think Fauci in the States is a great example of that, even though he was advisor to Trump, you know, he held his guns and, and uh, held on to, to, to staying in the scientific base. And I think that that's getting increasingly important to people because there are so many stories around and there are so many di different nations having different viewpoints as to what work and what doesn't. That said, even scientists are not agreeing. So we have a trouble there. Uh, excellent. Uh, Lisa Lotta, the coronavirus uh, pandemic, uh, what changes will we have around the globe? We are changing everything due to the pandemic. I mean, uh, especially digitalization has been exploding uh, because uh, people can work on tech at home. Uh, more people are now working hybrid. Uh, they're not forced to use the offices again. That's going to change forever. Also, the way we have been fighting to find a vaccine in a hurry has 
uh, demanded that people tap into a global brain of knowledge. Uh, we have started tracking people a lot more, so I can listen to your voice and find out whether you have COVID-19, but I can also look at uh, whether you are developing other diseases or that uh, if you're speaking to your wife, I can see if you're about to get a divorce, even though I can't hear your voice. So that kind of pattern recognition, artificial intelligence, that has exploded because now everybody can see the advantage uh, of finding out in terms of our health. Uh, so we don't bother so much about privacy and also a lot of businesses see the investment potential. So that's huge. Um, Finally, uh, I think we are moving into an era where uh, age matters. <laughs> uh, for a long time you said, oh, age is just a number, you know, young people can go on the same travel as the old people, but suddenly, you know, uh, age really matters. It's the young people who have to pay for the rebuilding, the restructuring of society. They are the one who will feel the environmental situation and then they will have to carry that huge debt on their shoulder. They haven't had the opportunity to enter the labor market. On the other hand, you have the elderly generation who are suddenly fearful of their health, who feel much more vulnerable in mingling, in traveling to uncertain places. We're also seeing a lot of nationalism uh, occurring uh, due to this pandemic. Right now, we're all competing who will be able to vaccinate uh, its citizens first and uh, Denmark being a part of the European Union. Suddenly, you can really uh, sense that we had the Brexit, who is, uh, the, you know, the UK are producing some vaccines. Are we not accessing those anymore? Where is the solidarity? And here on the long run, I think we'll start uh, having more holistic measurements, again, using the global brain saying, hey, guys, if we don't make sure that everybody's getting the vaccine, you know, it's going to hit us like a boomerang. We might as well not do it because you will have uh, immune uh, variations coming back like a boomerang. So uh, better be careful that you have the right targets. Uh, Lisa Lotta, uh, how serious are current shocks in the world? They are very serious because uh, we are looking at a financial system which has gone completely detached from the real world. We are uh, indebting ourselves like never before. And uh, so, so the whole notions of values are transforming. It's all moving into the cloud, into the cyber space of expectations, uh, rather in the real world. And then we have this huge emphasis on health, uh, but not really having these holistic measurements on who's actually suffering, what will be the good investments. I think we will look back at COVID-19 and we'll have a lot of lessons uh, from that period in time. Uh, Lisa Lotta, in your opinion, who will win and who will lose after the pandemic? Well, I actually think uh, the pandemic might uh, be accelerating the development for certain countries that had a lot of young people, like India, who have 6% mm -hmm. of young people compared to Europe, who have like 20%. So, so uh, it might actually open some windows for uh, other countries uh, to to develop momentum and do some development and maybe even skip some some developments and move straight into this new digitized world both because they are not so worried about uh, their privacy and also because they have uh, the education access now with the you know, uh, 5Gs and 6Gs that will cover the whole uh, surface of the world. And then we look at China. <laughs> China mm -hmm. is definitely coming out as a clear winner because uh, basically, uh, again, they have the, the focus on artificial intelligence. They don't have problems closing down. Um, I think uh, and some other regions that will come really strong out from it is like New Zealand and Australia and that's because they are islands so they can basically close off the borders and they can stay healthy and safe. I don't know if that will create a mental health uh, but uh, at least uh, physical health will uh, mm -hmm. there will be winners on that part. Basically they have completely deleted uh, COVID-19 as it is. Uh, Lisa Lotta, uh, which country has the most effective anti-COVID measures? 
Well, we, we used to look at, at places like Taiwan, and I guess it's a country that has the most digitized mm -hmm. uh, populations where it's really easy to monitor everybody at all points in time, that you have uh, real-time testing, you have real-time data. And it seems with mutations and so forth, that might be the way forward to get a new normal. Um, Again, I'm a futurist, I'm not a, an expert in, in viruses, but uh, it seems that uh, being ready to deal with any uh, merging viruses, it's going to be very much like we did after Terra. You know, you are Terra prepared and you will be virus prepared in this future. And here for sure it's uh, easier uh, to control, but it's also easier to control in uh, countries where people are fairly wealthy, so you can isolate them from one another. It, that is very hard if you have some poor ghettos where it's actually completely impossible. Uh, Lisa Water, uh, what uh, future holds for the countries which supply uh, labor migrants, labor forces? Uh, well, right now it's it's a crisis because uh, everybody has been sent back and sent home, and we go from uh, basically exporting work. We we try to next show we want to have our own production facilities. Uh, that said, uh, we will need uh, skilled labor everywhere, and. Um, I think one thing that will really help uh, labor forces from around the globe is the fact that we now get these hybrid working forms, so you don't actually have to be close to your production facilities. We have really taught every business that uh, maybe three days uh, out of five you can work from wherever you like, when you like, and that is going to loosen up the talent pool a lot, so we'll get much more flexible in terms of having different employers and maybe we won't think so much about uh, the nation state anymore but more about uh, where can we get the most innovative interesting development path and open up far more to to communicate that helps with google translate and uh, the ability to easily uh, yeah tr uh, transcend cultural barriers as well uh, Lisa Lotta, uh, so again, who will take an advantage of the crisis and who can replace local elites? I think it's the uh, young and hungry ones who are forced <laughs> to take advantage of the crisis because basically they haven't been able to onboard the existing businesses and uh, I think we will see uh, this group who are organizing themselves online creating their own trade unions, creating their own agreements and rules and who are helping each other but not working for a specific organization. And I think they will do that because democratically they have no voice because it's all the elderly folks sitting on politics. So they are basically inventing a completely new hybrid work form. And I think they will find new ways of creating value and work-life balances that we have never seen before. So we're going to look back and think, God, uh, the business was so old-fashioned structured back then. It's going to be far more um, uh, mobile. It's going to be far more at looking at what issues are there and very quickly trying to figure out, so what will we do about them? And I think uh, the silos that we have today within the, the labor market is going to open up a little bit as well. It's going to be, so we need a part of work that is practical, we need a part of work that is academic, but these silos where we split them, that's going to be so old-fashioned too. Uh, and so, so if you, we have this thing yeah. in Denmark that a uh, naked woman learns a woman to spin, spin or sew clothes, and it's a little bit the situation here. Mm -hmm. We have a, a, a young generation who will be desperate in finding their own platform. And I think uh, this critical mass and the fact that they communicate as they do, both in the gamer community, also what we've just seen with the GameStop investment going against Wall Street, we have just seen the beginning of this kind of organizations and and happenings. Uh, Lisa Lotta, uh, will COVID-19 change the map of populists and religious regimes? Uh, 
Again, it, it has uh, forced a lot of people to work online and to use uh, social media's uh, platform to communicate, which makes it easier and more uh, intuitive to start also voicing your disagreement with the current regime. So you will have underlying waves. That's one scenario. But the other scenario is that we also have a lot of state uh, supervision, a lot of state serving, which can really, really uh, kill any movement as soon as they even think about it. We won't, uh, you know, within the next five years, we can read brain waves, so we can actually know exactly what people are thinking and what mm -hmm. they are uh, reacting to. And so, if governments really want to suppress people, uh, unfortunately, their uh, abilities have improved as well. So, so you can say COVID-19 has just opened up for a lot of new technologies which can be abused or used, uh, but that's up to people. Lisa Lotta, uh, because of uh, COVID-19 and unstable uh, economic situation, people have anxiety, continuing stress, depression. It can be replaced by adaptation. It, it uh, will be uh, replaced by uh, a different peace with yourself is if you like you have to find a new way you have to find out that uh, you have to to live uh, with new uh, rules applying but as a futurist i think actually think it's healthy mm -hmm. that we have turned off the automat pilot and people have a think as to how do i want to contribute with value into this society how much do i really need to move around uh, what is important to me so it has uh, given rise to a lot of very important questions that we should all stop and think about uh, at certain intervals. So I think uh, going back, we will see a boom of creativity, of new ways of um, of, of sorting out our life. And so, so in that sense, I think um, it has been like everybody were in a hamster wheel running faster and faster, and they didn't seem to be able to change direction. I think people uh, are now forced to to ask whether their direction is okay and also to change it if it isn't. So uh, yeah, probably we will see. Oh, and another thing is that instead of having these global reactions that we had before, all countries were looking more and more the same because everybody had similar experience. When you walk down the street, it was the same high street shops you would see. You saw the same advertising. Suddenly, we had the microclimate of small bubbles of small uh, groups of people that you were talking to. Uh, you have your own local uh, neighborhood, this local uh, patriotism, where suddenly your neighbors and your local forest or your local walks get more important to you. Uh, and that's going to be very interesting to see. So, so in that sense, we'll see this biodiversity of different ways of, of coping. And it will also be interesting because uh, some people, yes, they have gotten very lonely. Other people have actually uh, had their first corona dog and they have started using nature and they have started, you know, spending time with their close friends, talking to them. So I'm sure we will also look back at this time and be a little sentimental. And do remember back then when we were in the Corona War, you know, we had time to have a proper cup of tea. We had time to have a conversation like we two are having right now. It's only happening yeah. due to COVID. Otherwise, I would be in a plane somewhere and you would be running around uh, somewhere else. So so um, we are seeing uh, some new, if you look at, at the global brain, we are seeing some new brain connections being established right now. Uh, Lisa Water, uh, coronavirus pandemic given a lot of free time for a lot of people. Uh, will people be able not to be afraid of free time? Actually, uh, for me, uh, this experience, because I live in a very wealthy country like Denmark, where we have uh, social security and a lot of uh, uh, safety packages during corona, 
And still people were very frustrated, still people got anxiety. And for me, uh, it's, you know, the Piketty book where we should all have a minimum basic income. And if everybody just had a minimum basic income, the world would just be happy. For me, it has been such a nice real world experiment saying, hey, no, the idea is not to pacify people, to let them sit down and binge TV series and games and have nothing to do because the robots are coming. It's so important for us to be active, to feel that we can contribute to society, to feel that uh, we are valuable to other people and that we actually have something to deliver. And uh, so this is not just a question of getting a basic income to people. It's really of activating the whole global workforce so people feel that there is a reason that they are on this planet and that, and that they are needed. Uh, and I think that's just a very important part of, of human nature, which we forgot to talk about when it was just a matter of getting the bottom of the Maslow's needs hierarchy covered. Um, so uh, I think I think uh, that is really something we will take with us uh, from COVID-19, that the countries that which will do well are actually the countries who are very good at uh, activating people and making them participate. Um, that's uh, extremely important. Uh, Lisa Lotta, uh, so uh, COVID-19 accelerating coming of the future. Again, oh sorry. Uh, yeah. COVID yeah, 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 uh, uh, COVID-19 accelerating coming of the future. Excel oh yeah, it's accelerating the future. Yeah, it is uh, for sure. It, it has uh, it has catapulted everybody into the future very fast, at least the digital future. Uh, but uh, I've been uh, working with you know already in 2011. It was like the big stay at home for work day and it never arrived and so as futurists we're like when is it arriving and uh, in that sense uh, finally we are getting telemedication finally we have people taking care of their own health so instead of it being hospitals helping you once you get ill you have to take care of your own preventive measures uh, you get all these insights from data Finally, we see we have to share data in order for data to become valuable. Uh, the educational system that has been so stifled, you know, with these long lecture theaters and long lectures where nobody was listening. Suddenly we have adaptive learning. We have flipped classrooms uh, finally occurring. Um, the pharma industry understanding how they can use, uh, you know, quantum computing for creating new pharma at much faster rates than ever before. So, so in many ways, it has been uh, hugely accelerating. And also the path towards feedback crisis and loneliness. Already before COVID-19, we had stopped really talking to each other, uh, sending text messages instead. And now with the chatbots coming, uh, they might be our future friend, you know, which we would prefer uh, talking to. So, so we also have these uh, Skype shields uh, on us at a much greater extent. So if anything, I think um, uh, Corona, the coronavirus has somehow magnified uh, development. So had we had, if we had troubles, the troubles have gotten worse. You know, if people were on the brink to divorce, they are getting their divorce. And uh, and likewise, if you have a feedback crisis, it has gotten much worse. At the same time, the good things about it uh, has gotten much better as well. We have really had an eye opener. Why did we, you know, sit in a plane for two hours to have one hour meeting with somebody I could just connect with like this, uh, with a click of a mouse? So so uh, um, yeah. Ah, uh, uh, great, uh, Lisa Water. Uh, in your point of view, uh, when uh, and how uh, coronavirus pandemic will end? I think we will, uh, and I again, I'm not a medical expert, uh, but looking at the mutations, looking at the behavior, what we see right now, uh, probably will have to link, uh, live with uh, some sort of the other of some kind of pandemic. Uh, because uh, uh, 
but we will be better at coping with it. We will be better at pre preventing and we'll be better at isolating once we see it. So, so we will have a, a virus preparedness in our populations where we know how to handle it. That said, of course, there are certain regions in the world where it's going to be really, really hard because people live very closely together. Um, but again, here uh, we will have the personalized medication uh, technological warning uh, telling us now we are getting near an infected area and uh, then take our uh, measures. And also I think uh, the pharma industry is going to speed up uh, that trial and error and um, will be much more acceptable maybe for experimenting more uh, and also we are looking into CRISPR uh, which is this new technology where you can do gene editing so as a futurist of course I, I, I think we will move uh, to some extent from from uh, curing diseases to, to to getting uh, diseases to disappear uh, simply by cutting them out of our gene map. So, so, and I think the the new vaccines that are entering the market uh, will be applied for that, also with cancer and diabetes. So it's going to be very interesting uh, to see. Uh, what we won't accept is even old age. You know, old age is an, a disease. So, so uh, we will not give up fighting for uh, our well-being. It's a uh, number one investment subject in Silicon Valley and everywhere else. So if anything, it has given us an increased focus on our health. Lisa Lotta, what's your message to people? My message to people is how do you uh, activate yourself in society and how do you activate other people around you? It might seem that everything has gone into a slumber, into a long winter sleep, but actually, uh, how can you use this situation to um, to hurry fast uh, by uh, taking a step back, thinking about what sort of ancestors should we be in this world? So when the people coming after us, they will say, oh, we're so happy they had this shut down back in uh, 21, you know. Once they opened their eyes again and went out on the street, they had a good thought uh, about what to do and how to better create value for people and the planet. Uh, Lisa Ott, it's my always great pleasure to have a conversation with you. And thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for inviting.